So Donald Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, just committed the crime of contempt of Congress. And frankly, that might not even be the worst part of Mark Meadows' day. Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So remember about a week ago when Mark Meadows, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, said he would cooperate with the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol attack, and then Meadows' book came out, and it had some ugly revelations in it about Donald Trump, and Donnie got mad at him. So today, Mark Meadows flip-flopped said he wouldn't co cooperate with the House Select Committee, and in fact today he failed to appear on a congressional subpoena, thereby committing the crime of contempt of Congress. Now, the flip-flop is easily explained. Mark Meadows wants to sell books, and if Donnie badmouths him, then Donnie's followers won't buy his book. You know, it really is true that everything Trump touches dies. So what happens to Meadows now? Well, here's today's reporting from CNN. January 6 committee says it is moving forward with criminal contempt for Mark Meadows. And that article begins, the House Select Committee investigating the January 6 riot informed Mark Meadows that they have no choice but to advance criminal contempt proceedings against him, given that the former President Donald Trump's former chief of staff has decided to no longer cooperate with the panel. But that might not be the worst part of Mark Meadows' day today, because after he failed to appear, the House Select Committee released a tweet, a tweet conversation that Mark Meadows was involved in. You ready for this? This came November 6, 2020, after Donald Trump lost the election, and it was a text message exchange between Meadows and a member of Congress, as of yet an unnamed member of Congress, and it was about appointing alternate electors, in essence, to take away Joe Biden's win. And the Congress member said, move would be highly controversial. I would add it would also be highly illegal, undemocratic, unconstitutional. And here's Meadows' text response. I love it. Kind of reminiscent of Don Jr.'s I love it moment. Remember when he learned that Russia would be interfering, trying to help daddy get elected? Remember what Don Jr. said? If it's what you say, I love it. Well, Mark Meadows has now had his I love it moment. No wonder Mark Meadows is scared to appear and testify before Congress. And let's be clear, Mark Meadows has a robust Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, given what we just learned that he loved the idea of corruptly overturning Joe Biden's win and installing Donald Trump for a second term. He loves it. But you know what? Even though he has a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination all day long, he was even too scared to show up and invoke it today. So let's quickly discuss something that we've been talking about a lot in recent weeks and months, executive privilege. And let's try to answer the question, does Mark Meadows have any viable claim of executive privilege? Let me not bury the lead. He doesn't, but he has more of an executive privilege argument than for example, a Steve Bannon, because Meadows was chief of staff to the President of the United States at the time of the election, and Steve Bannon was a great big governmental nothing at that time. 
And there is some case law, a case referred to as Nixon II litigation back during the Watergate days, that does say, you know, a former president may have some lingering right to claim executive privilege, and by extension, Meadows might have that same lingering right. But here are some things that cut against it. First of all, Joe Biden waived any executive privilege claim because he said it wouldn't be in the nation's interest to hide this information, to claim executive privilege. And because he's the current occupant of the White House, he's the one who really has the authority to waive or invoke executive privilege. Reason number one, that Mark Meadows loses the executive privilege battle. Reason number two, you can't use executive privilege or any privilege to cover up your own crimes. So he loses the executive privilege battle on that front called the crime fraud exception. Reason number three, he's already disclosed a bunch of this information publicly in his book. And if you disclose publicly information that might otherwise enjoy a privilege, executive privilege, attorney client privilege, doctor patient privilege, you're deemed to have waived it and you can be required to testify about it. So on all three fronts, Meadows loses and loses and loses any claim that he might have to executive privilege. So at a minimum, Mark Meadows was lawfully required to show up today and begin answering questions. Certainly he could have been asked lots of questions about his own text messages that incriminate him. Um, he could have been asked lots of questions about all the revelations in the book about conversations he had with Donald Trump. And then if it got to a really hot topic area, like did you and Donald Trump have, you know, private discussions about national security matters or important, you know, United States policy? Okay, Meadows could have said, I'm going to invoke executive privilege. And then that could have been addressed later. He didn't do that. He flat out refused to appear, thereby committing the crime of contempt of Congress. And now Meadows should be held in contempt, voted in contempt. He should be referred by Congress to the Department of Justice for a criminal contempt of Congress prosecution. That case must be presented to the grand jury for its action. That's the wording of the federal statute. The grand jury should indict Meadows. He should be tried, he should be convicted, and he should be imprisoned because the law provides if you're convicted of contempt of Congress, there are mandatory minimum prison terms. So if you're Mark Meadows, what do you do at this point? All of the evidence shows you're guilty, including your own texts. Do you walk into Congress and plead the fifth, which you have a lawful constitutional right to do? No, you fail to appear, you commit the crime of contempt of Congress, and you file a lawsuit. You use the courts for your own nefarious purposes. You use the courts as a weapon. And just a few minutes ago, the story broke that Mark Meadows filed a lawsuit against the select committee and against Nancy Pelosi, trying to weaponize the courts for his own illegal, immoral, unconstitutional ends. You know, he will lose that litigation. Here is how CNBC just reported it out. Mark Meadows sues Pelosi, January 6th committee, as they push to hold him in contempt. Yeah, he will lose that litigation. That would be like Mark Meadows standing on his own five yard line with one second left in the game, trying to throw a Hail Mary pass with a really weak arm and receivers who can't catch worth a lick. You know, my pop was a high school football coach. Um, but I am sure, folks, in the coming days, probably as soon as tomorrow, we will be talking more about the crimes of Mark Meadows, the action of Congress, and this new nefarious lawsuit that has just been filed. We'll be talking about it all. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.